Hi, I'm Bob Fry, and I'd like to talk about some of the books that we have. started in the Crystal Department, working under George Oku. This is a GS Crystal Catalog. On the inside of the cover is a picture of the GS Company. This catalog dates from 1955. On the left-hand column here, we'll see the MX, MT, MY. These codes, these letters, stands for the various shapes of the crystal. Round crystals for pocket watches timers. We've reached the page of the CMX crystals. The dimensions are listed underneath them. 21.1 millimeters by 18.7. Also stated that it's a growing crystal. You can see on these crystals line, dotted lines separated with a little break. This represents that this case is curved. The crystal therefore does not lay flat on a flat surface because the case itself at a raised edge. Well, when I began in the crystal department in the early 70s, Standard Unbreakable Watch Crystal Company, New York, New York, was still in business. The SUC company had a far greater range of styles and shapes available. We still have an extensive stock of the SUC classic unbreakable watch crystals to fit many classic antique design watches. In front of me, are two catalogs from the Schwarzschild and Company. Catalog B232 is the oldest one that I have from Schwarzschild. We also have Catalog 500. Catalog B32 is from the year 1935. It shows all the products available at that time from tools, cabinets that you'll see in my office, early demagnetizers, this book is very important because it does contain watch parts. Okay, we've now reached the fingerprint system used by Schwarzschild in 1935. This is the section here. We're open to the page of genuine Swiss 10 and a half line watches, factory material. Back then, to order Swiss materials, mention the series number of the movement and the kind of material desired. For example, one center wheel and pinion for Swiss series number 187. Much like today, to get the parts you want, you need to correctly identify your movement and place an order for the part. This 1935 book will contain pictures and illustrations of movements that were obsolete by the time Schwarzschild produced their 1951 catalog. Ten years ago, we purchased Harry's Watch and Jewelry Supply of South Hall in Illinois. This flyer was in our office and I was unaware of it until after I got back with all of Harry's merchandise. At one time, Harry, if we don't have it, the part wasn't made. Now, in the year 2011, the antique cases on our website, OFREI.com, are the very same cases listed in this 1935 catalog. Schwarzschild and Company, leaders since 1870. They went out of business in the 1970s. At one time, they were serving the nation with offices throughout the country. The 1953 catalog, we've opened up to a page where it'll list the Swiss movements. It's alphabetical, the Langendorf, Latham. Again, we'll see a system showing uh, pictures of the movement organized by the line size. And here we have page line sizes, eight and three quarters up to nine and three quarters. Ingram watch materials, sessions, you name it. You'll find it in this book. In 1930, my grandfather started this company. And this is a 1930 catalog for Waltham. This catalog, and later catalogs produced by Waltham, we have many copies of. Because in this 1930 catalog, we'll not find the calibers listed that can be found in this 1924 catalog from Waltham. 
of the 1924 Waltham catalog. This is the only reference source book we have for parts for models in 1877 or the 1879 model, 1868 model, the 1872 model. These models can only be found in this catalog. On this side here is the 1930 catalog from the Waltham Company. Earliest model listed is the 1883 18 size model. Waltham in 1930 was saying that all of their movements in the 1877, 1879 models, 1868, 1872 were all obsolete and they were no longer going to be supplying parts for them. Today I'm still supplying parts for these watches. It's the Illinois Material Catalog from the Illinois Watch Company. This is the December 1923 edition of this catalog. Here we have an eBosch essay catalog of parts, calibre numbers inside the book, gives some information on craft references from different calibers, base caliber, line size, the height, functions. This is the eBosch system numbering system. You'll see this system used throughout the watch industry. Hi Mr. Nelson, how are you? Pretty good. Mr. Still Nelson. able to be working. How long have you been working on watches and clocks? 87 years. 87 years. How old are you now? 96. So you were like 7, 8, 9 when you started playing with those Eight things? 8 years. 8 years old. How long have you been coming here? Since 44. Since 44. <laughs> Alright, so then that means... That was your granddad. Yeah. So my dad was like 15, 16 years old <laughs> yeah. or something like that. He was a kid then. He was a kid then. And so <laughs> grandma was still coming into work a little bit. Yeah. 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 Mexico Jewelers. Yes, sir. A little while ago, he said he's known me since what? He when? said, he, I see the guy when he was a baby. Hey. I had to, he peeped me real here, you see? <laughs> 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 All right, so this is 50 plus years ago. No, glass. So you did, you knew my father and oh. grandfather. My uh, grandfather. I know you papa of your grandfather. <laughs> you can't believe this, you see? I'm really old man. <laughs> How long have you been in business here then? 55 years. 55 years. So that, well, a lot has changed, huh? Yeah. 55 years, huh? You can't believe it. You can't believe it. We used to... I still know, have a hair, you see? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, you used to probably work on a lathe, or knew a lot of watchmakers yeah. working on lathes in those oh, days, boy. and fixing the pocket watches, and mechanical watches, and, and then the quartz came on, huh? Yeah, the quartz, new watches coming out. So many new people start to forget the the mechanical watches. You know? Very few people working in mechanical watches. How old are you now? Sir? I'm well, 76. 76, huh? Yeah. You don't believe, right? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, how much longer are you gonna fix watches? Oh, maybe maybe 10 years more. 10 more years. Maybe. 10 more years. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of guys at one time said they wanted to go in the watch industry because it was something that maybe they could do 85. after they retire. Maybe 85 be quit. Yeah. See what happens. If I not die before the 85. All right, I'm so still drinking heavy. That's no problem. <laughs> <laughs> this is June 24, 2011. Yeah. <laughs> I hope we see another day. <laughs> 56 cents. I'm Bob Fry and this is Kiki. Hi. Kiki, when did you start buying here? Buying the what should I buy? When did you buy here? My grandfather gave you credit once? What happened? Yeah, he said well anytime you are ready, we'll take your own money, he said. We opened your account. Uh, you've been, you've been you very up. nice. You got your start. Nice. Yeah. We gave you credit. Yeah. How long have you been, been doing this? Forty years. Forty years. Mm -hmm. You uh, work for the US government sometimes, don't oh, you? Oh yeah, I mm -hmm. do. 
Yes, US Navy, US Navy and, and yeah. the Coast Guard. All the admirals, all the generals, or everybody yeah. knows Kiki because <laughs> she does their timing. Well, they told me, uh, ship's captain said, come over and I'll meet you on a bridge. So I said, which bridge? Bay Bridge, what's on Mateo Bridge, oh, or Golden Gate? That was, that he was, said, my bridge. So that was said, Admiral oh, Nimitz, I, yeah. Admiral Nimitz yeah. invited you over. And he said, well, but one thing i like you to do. Admiral Nimitz, who wear, was the Admiral that saved us pants. in World War II. Because up until then, we <laughs> can, girls can, cannot wear pants those days. And every girl had to wear the skirt. Had to wear skirts. And uh, this ship's captain said, we have a bunch of sailors. Those guys, they like those pants. And you know how they uh, climb up on the bridge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. go straight up. And I said, well, can you wear pants? <laughs> so I said, aye, aye, sir, I love it. <laughs> so ever since I, I had my pants on. All right. And he was the first one. And he said, wear pants. Wear pants. <laughs> Guy's one of our uh, Time Zone Watch School stu graduate students. Uh, how long ago was I? Uh, I think I started this uh, series, the first one, maybe uh, the last quarter of last year. Last quarter, last year. What about time zone? Was it a good experience? Yes, absolutely. It was. Absolutely. It was. <laughs> they went through all three levels, huh? Yep. Timing and everything and playing with all this stuff. and Disassembling, um, timing. I started out with the ES-95, which was that's actually a good place to start. Take these things apart, put them back together again, they actually work, huh? To yes. And right now what's on your wrist? This is from Ofri. This is a your case. This is our this case. Is number one case. Ofri dial. What watch movement we have in there? This is a uh, 2893-2 with the 24-hour hand. 24-hour hand. We didn't think it'd be possible to put this movement in this case. Yeah, I figured it out. Guy did it, man. Guy did it.